What's going on, Big Time? How are you? I'm well, Stephen A. and yourself? I'm doing great, man. I want to get into a lot of things with you. I, I definitely want to talk to you about FAMU and what you're executive producing on ESPN+. Plus. We'll get into that in a few minutes. But the first order of business is the sport of basketball. First of all, how are you guys feeling right now? How are you feeling about the, your team for this upcoming season? Good. Really good. We're excited. Um, I think the best thing our team got coming back this year is continuity. We, we got a lot of the same faces that we had last year, but just like everybody else, we got to start over. You finished 51 and 21 last season, CP3. You, you won the Western Conference Finals. Did that surprise you at all that you guys were able to pull that off? Is that your expectations when you first arrived there last year? Um, I don't think it surprised us at all. And every time we step on the court, we expect to win. Uh, you know, the, the guys in our locker room, the coaching staff that we had and that we have now, uh, being led by uh, Monty. Uh, he's an unbelievable coach, a uh, mentor, and, you know, we just try to stick to our principles, and we'll do the same this year. Y'all lost in the finals. Y'all were up 2-0 and ended up losing to the finals. As you reflect on what transpired in that NBA finals that led to y'all defeat, what do you really, really focus on? What do you peel from that experience? How did it happen? Man, you learn. You learn so much. Uh, we lost to a really good team, a uh, good Bucks team. You know, they... They, uh, they beat us. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of things that I feel like I could have done better, things that we could have done better as a team. But uh, you learn from it, and, and you move on, and you have to get ready for this upcoming season. You know, DeAndre Ayton is a, is a, is a big-time play. He really showed a lot of promise and development as the season progressed last year. I thought he really had a good playoff, and obviously he ran into a little something different than Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Milwaukee Bucks in the NBA Finals. Now he sits here and he's making news because uh, there seems to be a stall in contract talks or what have you. How concerned are you uh, that this is a guy that's not going to be a part of the long-term plans for the Phoenix Suns in the future? I can't imagine that's going to be the case, but how concerned are you about that? I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. That's, that's the business of the game. You know, uh, those contract talks happen as players, agents, all that stuff. Uh, we got Mikael Bridges, another guy who's a big part of our team, so... You know, hopefully that stuff will take care of itself so we can uh, get back to, to playing and, you know, doing what we do. As you reflect on your career, particularly over the last two seasons, I remember a couple of seasons ago, seasons ago, people looked at you and they wondered how much you had left. Yet you arrived in Phoenix after being an all-star in Oklahoma City the previous year. You arrive in Phoenix. You play lights out. You're an all-star again. You average 16-9 and nine on the season and you lead this team uh, to the NBA Finals. What did last year say to you? I know what it said to everybody else in the basketball universe about you and how extraordinary you are as a point guard. What did it say to you about yourself at this point in time in your career? Um, man, I, I think it just told me to keep working, keep working. Uh, I think over the years, um, I'm so blessed to, to be going into my 17th season, but it's about the work. It's about putting the work in day in and day out and being grateful uh, for the opportunity. But, yeah, that was it. You know, it's never been about anything else but the work. You know, this is a, a kid's game that, that we get a chance to take care of our family's plan, and I'm going to continue to do that and try to do it at a high level. You constantly preach that message all the time, but it's not just about you. You say that message for a lot of people out there, for people who don't know you. A lot of times you play the role of a mentor to a lot of people. A lot of cats call you up, they listen to you, they get your guidance and your tutelage and what have you. Do you feel that it's important now more than ever to disseminate that kind of message about it being about the work? And if so, why do you feel at this particular moment in time that it's important to send that kind of message? Yeah, it's funny you say that. It's, it's always been about the work. And for me, um... Like, I'm, I'm big in grassroots basketball, right? So my dad spent his entire 401K on me and my brother playing travel basketball. My mom was a team mom on every AAU trip. And so the fact that we have our own program and I have the opportunity to see kids who use this game to change their lives, right? So I think for me, it's just always that, is if I know something, if I got any piece of knowledge that'll help the next guy, uh, help the next young lady, whoever it may be, then I can't help but to share it. <laughs> I got you. 
Let me transition real quick to the subject of a Kyrie Irving right now. I know you're no longer the, I mean, when you think about the role C.J. McCullough is going to be the president of the NBA Players Association after you served so admirably for years in that position. But you got a guy like Kyrie Irving that's making some noise right now because of the whole vaccination situation. I guess the question to ask you would be, what's your take on all of the noise that has been made about the vaccine situation involving the NBA considering the mandates that exist in New York? And, go, and San Francisco that potentially compromised Andrew Wiggins before he ended up getting vaccinated. And, of course, it's still compromising potentially the Brooklyn Nets because Kyrie, at least at this moment in time, hasn't handled that situation. What are your thoughts about all of that? Yeah, I think every situation is personal. Every situation is different and it's personal. It's not up to me to make a decision for anybody uh, except for me and my family. Um, I had some unbelievable years as the president of the PA and still involved here and there in different things. But um, yeah, I, I I feel on any situation, it's, it's up to that individual and they, they have to make that decision for them and their family. Let me transition from to, for, to why not us? Because obviously you're the executive producer of that. We're going to focus on FAMU football. Uh, there's no question about that. You're an executive producer. It's exclusively on ESPN Plus starting October 14th. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.